Welcome to my series of basketball videos where I'll be comparing various NBA greats against each other. I'm doing this because I find that a lot of the basketball videos comparing players on YouTube are too focused on the big names and sometimes compare players from different positions. Lots of people compare Jordan to LeBron and Kobe to Duncan, for example, due to their similar levels of achievements, but since those players play different positions and have different styles of play, it's not an interesting comparison. In this series, I want to do comparisons between not just more well-known players, but players from days past, in the 1960s, 1970s, 1980s, and the ABA as well, that most modern fans probably do not have too much knowledge about. Also, as much as possible, I want to compare players that play similar positions and or similar playstyles. To me, that's a more interesting and fruitful comparison. I'll be using 8 different metrics to judge each player. Scoring. This category will be defined by each player's career points per game, peak points per game, both regular season and playoffs, and number of scoring titles. Rebounding. This category will be defined by each player's career rebounds per game, peak rebounds per game, both regular season and playoffs, and number of rebounding titles. Passing. This category will be defined by each player's career assists per game, peak assists per game, both in regular season and playoffs, and number of assist titles. Efficiency Advanced Metrics This category will be defined by each player's career true shooting percentage, PER, and win shares per 48. Reason I use true shooting percentage is because it's more fair to guards. Defense This category will be defined by each player's all defensive selections, defensive win shares, and defensive player of the year awards. The reason I'm not using blocks, steals, or defensive box plus minus is because I want to compare the achievements of older players that modern fans might not have too much knowledge about, and players in the 1960s and early 1970s do not have these stats tracked. Awards. This category will be defined by All-Star appearances, All-NBA selections, MVPs, Finals MVPs, and championships as a top 3 player. The reason I have to count championships as a top 3 player on the team is because otherwise, you'll get into the situation where, for example, Robert Ori has 7 rings and Karl Malone has 0, and it's not representative of how much better a player is if you weren't a top 3 player on that team contributing to a championship. Also, I'll be including ABA stats and awards, and using them equivalent to their respective ABA stats and awards. Also, no All-NBA 3rd Team selections are included because All-NBA 3rd Teams weren't added until the late 1980s, which is unfair to older players. Playoffs. This category will be defined by how many Eastern Conference Finals or Western Conference Finals and Finals a player has been to, and how many championships they won as a top 3 player on the team. Yes, this is supplementary to the awards category because it also rewards players for making it far in the playoffs, even if they don't necessarily win at all. Totals. This category will be defined by longevity, how many total points, rebounds, assists, and win shares a player has accumulated throughout their career and rewards a player's durability. After all, a lot of people say the best ability is availability. And of course, this is only going to be my opinion from comparing the available metrics, since I've not watched most of these players live or even been born when some of these players have been playing. And to keep it fair, I'm judging them based on how they did in their own era. There's no comparing what this NBA player played in today's era or the 1960s, none of that. It'll be strictly based on their stats and accomplishments within their own era against that era's competition, which makes the most sense to me. So I hope you guys enjoy this comparison video and hopefully learn something new from it. The 30th episode in the series looks at two all-time shooting guards from the 1960s, both of whom could be considered the next best guard of the era after Jerry West and Oscar Robertson. Hal Greer is the Philadelphia 76ers' all-time leading scorer, an incredible mid-range scorer that helped the 76ers win their first championship as a franchise alongside Will Chamberlain. Sam Jones was a crucial part and clutch scorer of the 1960s Celtics dynasty, winning 10 championships alongside Bill Russell. Both players were contemporaries and part of the NBA's 50 and 75 greatest players, but which player had the greater career? Let's find out. In the scoring category, both players were excellent scorers for their team, being the primary offensive option for their teams. Greer averaged 19.2 points per game, peaking at 24.1 points per game in 1968, and 20.4 points per game in the playoffs, peaking at 27.7 per game in 1967. Sam Jones averaged 17.7 .7 points per game, peaking at 25.9 points per game in 1965, and 18.9 points per game in the playoffs, peaking at 28.6 points per game in 1965. It's interesting to note that both players raised their averages in the playoffs. While the career numbers favor Greer, and Greer was the main scoring option for the 76ers even when Wilt Chamberlain was on the team, we also have to note that Sam Jones had the higher peak scoring averages in the playoffs. This indicates to me that Jones actually was as good of a scorer as Greer was if he needed to be. The reason why he doesn't have as many 20 points per game seasons as Greer is mainly because he had to play with guys like Bill Sharman, Tom Heinsohn, and John Havlicek, three other great scorers on his team during his career. But if needed, Jones could score 24 to 25 points a night if he had to. So this context is what makes me think that this comparison is actually much closer than expected, which leads me to call it a tie. 
When it comes to rebounding, Greer averaged 5 rebounds per game for his career, peaking at 7.4 rebounds per game in 1968, and 5.5 rebounds per game in the playoffs, peaking at 7.4 game in 1965. Jones averaged 4.9 rebounds per game, peaking at 6 per game in 1959, and 4.7 rebounds per game in the playoffs, peaking at 7.1 per game in 1962. It's pretty close to call, as I feel Jones at his peak could rebound almost as well, but Greer has a slight edge in career and peak numbers, so I'll have to give this one to him by a hair. In the passing category, it's a lot easier to see who passed more here, as Greer averaged 4 assists per game for his career, peaking at 5.1 per game in 1970, and 4.3 assists per game in the playoffs, peaking at 6 per game in 1964. Jones averaged 2.5 assists per game, peaking at 3.2 per game in 1963 and 1966, and 2.3 assists per game in the playoffs, peaking at 3.1 per game in 1962, 66, and 67. Greer was clearly counted upon more as a playmaker for his team than Jones was, as Jones was playing on a team with a lot of great passers already. So this one will go to Hal Greer. In the efficiency and advanced metrics category, while true shooting percentage is close, both shot about the same percentage, Jones has a higher PER and win shares per 48 by a good margin, so I'll have to give this one to Sam Jones. In the defense category, I think this one will actually go to Sam Jones. Although it's harder to know who is better defensively in an era with no all defensive, and not much footage available, Sam Jones played 300 less career games than Greer did, and yet has the advantage in defensive win shares, so it seems that Jones was the better defender here. In the awards category, Sam Jones has the second most championships of any player in NBA history with 10. However, Greer was considered the better guard most of the time, holding a sizable advantage in all-star and all-NBA selections over Jones. So Jones being on that great Celtics team definitely helped him a lot, but we have to recognize that Greer was probably the better talent. While it's not all about championships, Jones was not a Robert Horry type role player. He heavily contributed to a lot of those championship teams. Going by the finals numbers, Sam Jones was the top two player and leading scorer on five championship teams from 1962 to 1966, taking over from Tom Heinsohn and Bill Sharman, who were the primary scorers in the early Celtics championships and before John Havlicek took over as the primary scorer in the later Celtics championships. So despite Greer's extra All-NBA selections, this gives Jones the decisive edge in this category for me. In the playoffs category, I think although Greer went to an impressive 5 Eastern Conference Finals, this one easily goes to Jones because he was in 11 NBA Finals and won 10 rings. Enough said, right? In the longevity category, this one goes to Greer easily as he played almost 300 games more than Sam Jones did. So when all the categories are summed up, how Greer takes the rebounding, passing, and totals categories, while Sam Jones takes the efficiency, awards, defense, and playoffs categories, with scoring being a tie, giving Sam Jones the win. Sam Jones will be remembered as one of the greatest shooting guards ever, even though he played on a great team alongside Bill Russell, Bob Cousy, Bill Sharman, John Havlicek, Tom Heinsohn, and others, he was incredibly clutch in key moments for them and often was their best or second best scorer on the team. Hal Greer was a 76ers legend who was on a great 76ers team alongside Will Chamberlain, Chet Walker, and Billy Cunningham, and was the leading scorer on their championship 1967 team. Imagine being the leading scorer on a team that had Will Chamberlain on it tells you how great of a scorer he was. Both of these players deserve to be better remembered today. I hope you guys enjoyed this comparison. Thanks for watching. Be sure to like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next comparison video.